When Lisa failed to show up for plans with her father to help her move into her new apartment, her mother called each of her daughter's many friends. Nobody knew Lisa's whereabouts, but several mentioned a party on Nanaimo Lakes Road which she'd attended with an unknown man. Her parents asked RCMP to investigate the party, but they refused, adamantly stating that Lisa was, never, there. In fact, this is the only thing investigators have ever claimed to be confident about, in relation to Lisa's disappearance. Their actions contradicted their words when, nearly two decades later, they searched the property, not once or twice, but on at least three separate occasions. The first two were in December 2020. Three weeks later, January 6, 2021, the lead investigator received credible and verified specific information including what happened to Lisa, who was responsible, and who else was there, along with the precise coordinates of Lisa's grave, and a detailed explanation of why previous police efforts had failed to locate Lisa's remains. The caller provided their name, and stated they were willing to testify, despite fear of retribution. Two days later, the corporal provided the caller with an unexpected and bizarre follow-up report, consisting of an alternative explanation for the information that had been provided by the caller. The story was indisputably concocted, poorly, and by the end of the call, it was clear that the corporal had no intention of locating Lisa's remains. Lisa Marie Young had been severely and ruthlessly beaten, at a Departure Bay residence, by the same man who hosted the first party Lisa had been brought to around 1 a.m. The man was dropped off with Lisa, at his home, midday, possibly by a jaguar. Lisa was then murdered in the home, her body placed in the hammock in the backyard. Equipment arrived, and a deep hole was dug adjacent to the back of the house. Around 6.30 p.m. on Canada Day 2002, Lisa Marie Young's body was buried in the hole. Afterwards, a four-square-foot concrete slab was poured atop. The concrete was eventually further concealed by the planting of a garden above, as it remained until the family moved out of the home, several years later, when the couple divorced after years of violent abuse. According to the current homeowners, RCMP returned to search the property a third time. However, the location provided by the caller was never checked, as shown by the concrete slab, which is still present and undisturbed in recent satellite photos of the location. Ground-penetrating radar would have been ineffective due to the presence of the concrete as well as other factors. Luca, the dog involved in the search, is a standard police dog, bred and trained to track and immobilize fleeing criminals. Actual specialized RCMP cadaver dogs and their handlers can be brought in from other detachments but were not. The third search likely consisted of a resistivity testing method such as FPR, but this would have been ineffective due to the grave's depth, as well as its location adjacent to the home. Regardless of all that, the corporal in charge of the investigation already knows precisely where Lisa is buried, along with corroborating evidence. This is only one of several verified instances when RCMP have been negligent or have lied to the public, or directly to Lisa's parents, about her case.